I'm an old man. And as an old man, I've seen the rise of the video game medium. I've been playing video games longer than probably some of you guys have been alive, which is, I mean, really weird to say. But I've seen hardware manufacturers come and go. I've seen mascots come and go. Huge companies that were making video games come and go. And it's been very interesting to see this rise of video games into where it is now. You know, starting out as something that was viewed as for children and stuff like that. And it wasn't cool to be a gamer. Now, of course, being a gamer is like the most socially acceptable thing in the absolute world. The gaming industry has now overtaken things like Hollywood, overtaken things like the TV industry, overtaken the music industry and amount of revenue generated and amount of sales that they get for these entertainment purposes. So it's been very fun. And I think one of the things that's definitely kind of missing out in, in the current generation, and it's probably something I don't think we'll ever see again, was the generational gap. The, the gap between when a new system would come out comparative to an old system. When you look at something like the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5, you know, a lot of these games were cross-generational. As time goes on, we'll see PlayStation 5 only games, but there's nothing that's really like, wow, this is so much different than it used to be in terms of visuals. They've really done so much. It's more of in the little details, things like frame rate, ray tracing, lighting effects, shadow effects, particle effects, and stuff like that. I definitely appreciate how good video games look nowadays, but I do feel like we're almost at a law of diminishing returns with it where it's like, well, how much can they really do you know, from this? How much more can this really get into without you know, completely breaking everything and becoming just too realistic? to the point of where nobody really enjoys it but during back in the day man these these generational leaps they were amazing you know they were absolutely amazing you look at something like an 8-bit to a 16-bit system you have of course you know bigger games on a 16-bit system compare nes to snes snes was just leagues more powerful than the nes you made genres you know, you had whole new genres because of something like the power of the SNES comparative to the NES. You had be better presentation in games. You know, video games really took these large jumps from generation to generation because companies would tap out the power of these systems that they had and then want to move on to the next thing. But I think one of the craziest generational leaps is obviously the Super Nintendo to the Nintendo 64 and specifically Super Mario 64 because that of course was a launch game for the N64 but when you look at like what the Super Nintendo was doing and then what the N64 was doing it was absolutely mind-blowing now of course the Super Nintendo had stuff that was very impressive for the system you know it had a good color palette it did have the cropping issue with some of the games comparative to the Sega Genesis version of the games. But more often than not, the Sega, uh, the uh, Super Nintendo version did look better than the Sega Genesis version. And that pains me to say it because I'm a Sega kid, but I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. When you look at what they were able to do from a generational leap from the Super Nintendo to the N64, though, there definitely were seeds planted that would kind of give you, you know, an idea of where they were going. When you look at something like Star Fox, on the Super Nintendo, like Star Fox had these polygonal graphics that you didn't see them on the Sega Genesis at that time. Of course, the SVP chip came along to sort of counteract the Super FX chip, but this was just such an interesting time in video games because these companies were thinking outside of the box in order to push the limitations of their systems. But Super Mario 64 was special. Super Mario 64 was one of those games, and it's one of the few games where the first time you saw that game, you were like, holy shit, how, how did they do this? This is absolutely next level stuff. This is mind blowing stuff because when you look at the Super Mario games on the uh, Super Nintendo, of course they were 2D side scrollers. That's what we knew Mario as. Every Mario game that was a mainline Mario game up until that point had been a 2D side scrolling platformer and they all worked, you know. There was that nice jump from something like Super Mario Brothers 3 to Super Mario Brothers World in terms of visuals, in terms of level layouts and how you do things and stuff like that. But Super Mario 64 took that and brought it into a whole new dimension, brought it into a whole new stratosphere 
of video games. And there was so much that Super Mario 64 was like the first to really do. I, I find it bizarre that so many people are like, oh, that game hasn't aged well at all. You know, it hasn't really aged all that great. There's some camera problems. Look, there was camera problems in tons of early 3D games. But Super Mario 64 was the first game to take Mario and put him in a more open format. And like just exploring that castle when you were a little kid, Felt like a game in and of itself, finding all these hidden rooms and hidden things within the castle, the secret slide and stuff like that. Like that was just absolutely mind blowing stuff because you had a level of control and a level of freedom that you did not have in any other mascot game up until that point or any really any game up until that point. That was like a mainline thing, a staple franchise that you thought you knew and you didn't. Because you were just scraping the iceberg with all the titles up until that point. Of course, the introduction of the analog stick made this like the first 3D platformer to utilize an analog stick. A new way of movement that was just so much more fluid than something like a D-pad. You had full directional control of where you took Mario. It was just such a groundbreaking thing and like a groundbreaking transformation in how you just played video games. And that's all thanks to the N64 controller, whether you love it or hate it. Personally, I, I'm a fan of it, even though evidently I hold it wrong, which I don't hold it wrong. I just stretch my hands out like I'm Stretch Armstrong. Today, I'm gonna show you how normal people hold an N64 controller. You hold it like this. You use your thumb across to get the analog stick and you can use the D-pad. But how do you hit the Z button in the back? You use your middle finger. This isn't rocket science. Hold it like a man. But yeah, like I, I think that game did so much for the 3D platforming genre because it essentially created the 3D platforming genre. Everyone wanted to do a 3D platformer after Super Mario 64 came out because they were fun. When you look at the level design of these levels, once again, that freedom aspect really plays a huge role as you're trying to find the stars within the levels and like... There were some crazy cryptic ones that like you, you had to think sort of outside the box in order to get them all. And it, it was just it's just a, such an amazing game. It, you know, it's definitely not a perfect game because of the fact that, yeah, the camera does get a little bit wonky from time to time. But like, really, that was the best that could be done because that's all anybody knew. There was no such thing as like a proper 3D camera system that you see nowadays that's just so, you know, standard for all of these games. Like they really broke ground with things like the 3D camera. They really broke ground with things like the analog stick and how you controlled Mario and how you could have this pinpoint precision when you're doing things like movement. Like you literally told him where to go and he went there. If you wanted him to go fast or slow, you controlled that as well. You could tiptoe or you could go at full speed. And I just feel like super mario 64 for whatever reason doesn't get the flowers it deserves like i re I specifically remember going to my cousin's house and my uncle had just bought them an n64 and just sitting in front of the tv and looking at this game just an absolute bewilderment like what 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 the hell is this like, look at how big this is. Look at how awesome this is. Look at all the freedom in this game. Like, this game could last you, you know, what you would perceive as a lifetime back in that day. I remember renting an N64 from my local video store with Super Mario 64, and I would just, like, listen to the music, man. Like, the music was just so timeless in that game, and, like, just so well done and exploring all these levels and, you know, finding out, oh, you got to fight Bowser three times. There's three different versions of Bowser in his little, you know, area that you have to go into, man. Like that game was special, dude. If you were around for it and you were old enough to appreciate it, that game was a game that just left an impact on you. You know, that was a generational game. That was a generational leap in what we saw from video games. And, you know, there's tons of other instances, obviously, you know, you could do stuff from PS1 to PS2, this and that and stuff like that. And maybe I'll sort of explore those more. But I, I really feel like Super Mario 64 was one of the craziest leaps ever. You know, it was just absolutely massive, absolutely massive. And of course, you could buy it on your Switch at one point in time, but they had to take that away from you. Um, of course, it is on Nintendo Switch Online service. It's not really, you know, super enhanced like they did with the other things. But I mean, that's still a really good version to play, you know. And if you've never played it, like go in with an open mind and just look at history. Because really, really, that's a, that's a historical game. I feel there's not many games 
where I would classify them as like historical art. Like if you have a video game museum, like that's a game that should be on display, you know, right in the forefront because of what it did for video games at that time. Nintendo used to be on the cutting edge, folks. I know that's absolutely shocking to think about. Let me know in the comments section down below, though, your memories and thoughts on Super Mario 64. A timeless game. I play through it once in a while. Definitely one of my favorite Mario games of all time. It's pretty much like Super Mario 64 and actually Super Mario Odyssey that are my favorite 3D Mario games and probably my favorite Mario games of all time. But let me know what you think of that in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for coming into the stash. My editor is going away for a week. He's going on vacation. So we're going to be trying something different while he's away. I was going to load him up with work and make him get to work. But I was like, hey, let's try something different. Let's do some other stuff on here. You know, it's supposed to be a variety channel of just random crap that pops into my head. I've got some random crap. And as always, catch you guys on the next video. Later.